With the walls and floors in place, let's take a look at how you can improve the scene by applying simple materials to objects. You'll come back later to more modeling to create doors, windows, and curtain walls. Commonly, you use the standard material for the scanline renderer and the arc and design material for the mental ray renderer. In this movie, however, you'll be focusing on the multi sub object material, which is crucial in architectural rendering. As its name implies, the multi sub object material enables you to apply multiple materials, standard, arc and design, or otherwise, to a single object in the scene. This is done by manipulating the face IDs on objects. Currently, the scene is set to use the scanline renderer. That's fine for now. Imagine you want to apply an off-white color to the interior walls. This can easily be done by creating a standard material, specifying an off-white color to the diffuse channel, and then applying the material to the interior walls in the scene. But then your kid comes along and says, no, no, I want my room to be yellow. You could potentially select and detach the faces that make that room into a separate object, but there's a better way. In the Material Editor, drag a multi sub object material into the viewer. Double click the node to see the material's properties. The multi sub object material is really a container for other materials. You can link materials to each individual channel. In this case, the off-white material to channel or ID number 1. Create another standard material based on a yellow diffuse color. Link it to the second channel, ID number 2. This is basically saying that when you apply the multi sub object material to an object, any faces identified as ID number 1 will be off-white, and any faces identified with ID number 2 will be yellow. You can have up to 1000 IDs or sub-materials, although it's doubtful you will need that many. Set them to 2 for now. Apply the multi sub object material to the interior walls. The walls are mostly white, but the gaps you bridged earlier are yellow. You need to adjust the face IDs to get things to look right. Select the walls and in the Modify panel go to Polygon mode. Press Ctrl A to select all faces and then set their ID to 1. All walls are now white. Select the faces that make the inside of the smaller room. and set the ID to 2. The inside walls of that room are now yellow. If you want additional colors for other rooms, then you can expand the multi sub object material to more channel IDs. You can then assign the object's face IDs accordingly. Try this little exercise by making the kitchen partition blue. Next, you take a look at the outer wall. Let's say you're looking for a brick exterior and a paint interior. Create a new multi sub object material. Set its first channel ID to be an instance of the off white color material you created earlier. Apply the newly created multi sub object material to the exterior walls. The effect is far from perfect, but you still need to adjust the face IDs. Make sure the exterior wall object is selected. Go to the Modify panel and access Poly Subobject mode. Select all the faces, Ctrl A, and set them to ID number 1. Now the exterior walls are all white. Select the outer faces.
and set them to ID number two. At this time they turn black. Drag in a new standard material into the viewer. Set that standard material to be based on a brick diffuse bitmap. You'll find one in the zip file you downloaded for this tutorial. Make sure the new standard material is set to display its maps in the viewport and link it to channel ID number 2. The wall sections are still black in the viewport but that's only because you need to define mapping coordinates. Exit polygon mode and apply a UVW map modifier to the exterior walls. Set it to box mode and set the length width height values to 4 feet. Now the outer walls are accurately mapped with bricks. You typically would want to enhance the bricks material with bump and specular maps but that's not the focus of this tutorial. On the other hand, let's revisit the yellow room and see how you can paint the outer wall yellow. Go down the stack to editable poly polygon mode and notice that there's a stretch of wall that extends from the smaller room to the master bedroom. You need to separate the two sections before you can change the face IDs. Press F3 on the keyboard, it's easier to do this in wireframe mode. Switch to edge mode. Select all the horizontal edges that make that strip of wall. Use the connect setting box. Use one segment only and adjust the slide value to make sure the division happens where the interior wall is. Go back to polygon mode and select the walls that are meant to be yellow. Set them to ID number 3. Again, they turn black but that's because you haven't yet defined the material's third channel. In the Slate Material Editor, instance the yellow material you created earlier into the third channel ID of the new multi-sub-object material. You may need a quick refresh, just pan the view a bit until the outer wall turns yellow. For good measure, set that new material to be based on three sub-materials only. You can always add more later as you need them. Also, it's a good idea to rename the multi-sub-object materials. For the floor, you first need to convert it into an editable poly. You can then use the same technique to separate the floor surface ID from the rest of the slab. This way you can create and apply a multi-sub-object material based on two ID channels. One where you can instance the off-white color, which works well for the ceilings. And another that you can define as floor surfacing with a tiling bitmap like the one you downloaded for this tutorial. Again, you will need to adjust your mapping coordinates for this to work well. If you want to have different floor surfacing, then you'd need to subdivide the surface like you did with the exterior walls earlier. This way you can define more face IDs and more sub-materials. If you have time, add and apply a standard material based on a cement bitmap for the balcony slab. You'll also need to apply mapping coordinates for that to work well. In the next movie, you'll create pivot and sliding doors.